Good morning. I've been seeing and hearing a lot the phrase, we're all going through this together. Well, last Sunday I played a song about, Lord, please don't move this mountain. Just help me figure out how to get around it. And the song I'm going to play today is a Bill and Gloria Gaither song with kind of the same message. As we see what is laying before us, we wonder what the Lord's going to do about it. Is he going to remove it or help us get through it? And the title of this song is perfect. It's called Through. I hope you enjoy the, the tune. Good morning. My name is Kathy Milhop, and this is a community time portion of our worship service. Let's start with the birthdays for this week. May 3rd, Leah Overman, Kelly Yeedy Barbado, and Suzanne Ho. May 4th, Rachel Hayeswinkle. May 5th, Brandon Davis and Micah Faulkner. May 7th, Charlie Noble. May 8th, Audrey Lamar. And May 10th, Krista and Caitlin Noble. A very special early birthday on May 11th, Jane Taylor is turning 98. An update on Diana Ward. She has been released from the hospital. She is now in rehab. If you'd like to send a card to her, her mailing address is 11755 North Michigan Road, apartment 215, Zionsville, Indiana, 46077. An update on Marge Curry was received Friday afternoon. She is improving. They've taken her off of the ventilator and she's able to walk but with assistance. If you'd like to send a card to her, her mailing address is 6270 South 800 East, Zionsville, Indiana, 46077. An update on Pastor Gina. She is continuing to improve, but she still feels pretty weak. So take your time, Pastor Gina. We want you healed and well. She would like to remind everybody that if you would like to contact her, please do so by phone, text, or email. Her cell phone number is 765-274-9800. 74. Her email address is gina.kirkland at inumc.org. Her home phone number is 765 274 5085.
seven. Other news. The May version of Salem Scribbles is now posted on the church website. The website is salemumczionsville.org. A few days ago, Tina Hand heard from the Chicago Organ Company. All good news. We, they are on schedule and all is well. And if we're lucky, we might even have the organ return to us in three to four weeks. The bell ringers. What a joy this has been. Thank you for the great idea, Marie. Today's bell ringers were Marshall, Starr, and Mark Starkey. Next week, the bell ringers will be the Hipsky family. In case you did not know, we are also streaming that bell ringing each week live on Facebook. If you'd like to join and volunteer to ring the bell, just contact me, Kathy Milhoff, we'll add you to the list. A reminder that on Thursday, it is the National Day of Prayer, May 7th. Love one another. John 13, 34. A huge thank you goes out to everyone who has contributed to the video worship program we've been working on each week. We submit the information to Bob, who then is able to put it all together. Thank you so much, Bob, for everything you've been doing. Have a great week, everybody. Good morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship? Christ the Lord is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! The Good Shepherd is willing to lay down his own life for his sheep. He knows his sheep and they know him. The Good Shepherd guides his sheep down the right path. Jesus, Jesus is, is the a Good Shepherd. shepherd. His goodness and love will be with us all our lives. Hallelujah! Thank you. You may be seated. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, through life everlasting. Amen.
For the offering this morning, we have two scriptures to remind us of our responsibility and to share our blessings. Leviticus chapter 19 verses 9 through 10. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same for your grape crop. Do not strip each every last bunch of grapes from the vines, and do not pick up the grapes that fall on the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. For the second scripture, I will be reading Romans chapter 12, verse 8. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Thank you. Good morning, Salem. This is Pastor Gina, and I'm doing better. I could do much better, but every day is, is one of those days we, we just hold on to. It's prayer time, and so we're going to um, continue with the prayers that were listed in the community time this morning. And so um, we're also going to continue to pray for um, all those people who are are ill, who are fighting corona, who are on the front lines, who are doing all the things they need to do to um, to keep us safe and, and to care for those who are sick. Um, just so that you know that um, my diagnosis is um, COVID-19, not documented. Um, and so I'm still battling strength, but every day gets better and better. And when we were little kids, we used to say gooder and gooder. So um, let's pray for our, our government leaders and, and our spiritual leaders as we all try to figure out how to keep doing this church thing together. And um, let's just pray. Lord God, we thank you for your mercies that we see each and every day. We thank you for those who, who are right there in the front lines, right there caring for people who may be going on to glory all by themselves where their family can't be with them. We ask you, Lord, to bless the families of those who are out there, who are subjected to this virus. Lord, we ask that, that you help us to have more patience, to be able to stay home, to do what we need to do. Oh God, we ask that you just continue to keep us as church. We know the church is not a building. Church is the people. And God, we thank you that we are the church. Lord God, as we continue to do what we need to do, continue to strengthen us keep us, make us, mold us, and, and Lord, allow us to be about your will and your way. Oh God, right now we ask that you let us continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples when together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us, li lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, oh his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear and resting on his goodness i lose my doubt and fears though by the path he leadeth but one step i may see his eye is on the sparrow and i know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches you. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him, from care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free. Oh, the lie is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me and you. Be safe, be well, love from the family. Hey, my Salem family. I hope this finds you well today. Our scripture reading today will be from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hello, children of God. I'm Paula, and I'll be giving the message today for children of all ages. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter. Today is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, because each year on this fourth Sunday of Easter, the gospel is always taken from the 10th chapter of John, where Jesus speaks of himself as the Good Shepherd. Have you heard of a shepherd before? Do you know... Have you? I, I have not. Okay. Well, who knows what a shepherd is? Brooklyn? A shepherd is like someone that takes care of the lambs. Yes. And they carry them around their neck and their head. Yeah. 
A shepherd is a person who takes care of lambs, the sheep. Ruth? Um, also, a shepherd will, if one sheep wanders, it will leave the rest of the flock and go find the lost sheep. It's the caregiver for the sheep. Okay, so here's a question. How many of you have a pet or animal of some kind in your family? Uh, everybody! Okay, how many of you have a cat? Lauren and Brooklyn have a cat. One. How many of you have a dog? Everybody has a dog. Okay, how many of you have more than one pet in your house? Okay, so what are ways that you need to take care of your pets? Lauren, let's start with you. Um, feeding them, giving them water, and taking care of them so they don't die. That's right, food and water is very important. Ruth? Um, showing them love and playing outside with them and like taking them on walks, uh, making sure that they get affection and exercise. Okay, those are good things. And love, with love and play. Brooklyn. Um, making sure that they take it, like that you take care of them in any way. Like, any way they, they need. They come up to you. Like if you're sad and they come up to you. They might be trying to like make you happy, so you pet them. Okay. Like, make sure that you pet them. Okay. Take care of them. Do you provide them a safe place? Yeah. Okay. You yeah. keep them inside where they're warm. Yeah, because yeah. Because if okay. they get cold okay. a little bit, then you gotta bring them inside. If they get hot, yeah. they, you can no. you can give them water inside or outside. That's right. Now. I have an animal that I care about. I kind of share an animal with Ruth and Deneen, a dog. Her Ivy. name's Ivy. But when I have Ivy, I like to show her that I care about her and all the things she said, food and water and walks and potty breaks. So these animals that we all take care of, they know that we care about them, don't they? Don't they? And they know that we love them and we're going to look after them, right? They trust us. Okay, Ruth. Um, even if you can't get another dog, you can take them to like a dog park. Oh, a dog park. That's a good idea. Yeah, I about this. Okay. All right. So all these things you're talking about, taking care of the pets, in a tiny way, tiny way, caring for your pet is a little bit like being a shepherd. Now you remember, you told me, let's remind everyone, that a shepherd takes care of sheep. All right? So did you know that sheep are mentioned in the Bible more than 500 times? 500 times! More than any other animal. Now, the frequent mention of the sheep in the Bible comes for two reasons. All right. First, sheep were important to the agricultural life of the Hebrews and the other peoples of the Bible. The people that lived in that time. Okay. And secondly, throughout the Bible, Sheep are used to represent or symbolize God's people. So in the Bible, when they're talking about sheep, they're probably talking about us, about people, okay? The shepherds are mentioned dozens of times throughout the Bible, beginning with the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 2, where it tells us of the very first shepherd. Do you know who it was? No, it was before Jesus. Well, that's a good answer. The very first shepherd talked about in the Bible. Wait, no, I think I is, know. It was Adam. One of Adam and Eve's sons. Yes, Abel. The son of Adam and Eve was Abel, the very first shepherd who kept his flocks. Okay, so that's in the first book of the Bible. Do you know that there are other great men of the Bible, such as Abraham and Moses, that were shepherds? Did you know that? And who were the first people to go meet Christ Jesus? Who did the angels call to come see him? Who was it? Shepherds. Shepherds! Shepherds who were watching their flocks. They came into the stable and, and met Jesus. Okay? And before... Well, hang on. Hang on. i got to tell you about these other people. And before he was a king, David was a shepherd boy tending his father's flocks. Okay? And the psalmist David 
beautifully expressed the responsibilities and concerns of a good shepherd. And Miss Violet read the 23rd Psalms just before I started speaking. So let's look at that 23rd chapter a little closer. Okay? Now let's see if this sounds familiar to you. It's called the Shepherd's Psalm, and it's Psalm 23. Verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And verse 2 says, He lets me lie down in fields of green grass. So sheep eat a lot of grass, right? And grass is pretty plentiful in the fields, right? Okay, so that line refers to the feeding. Okay. Next it says, He leads me beside quiet waters. Did you know that a sheep can drown in running water? The flow of the water can pull him away and drown if all that wool gets really wet. So the shepherd must keep them out of the streams and lead them to a safer pond without the moving water. Yeah. Okay. The next verse 3 says, He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths for the honor of his name. So sheep can wander and get into places they can't get out of. So they need the shepherd to help them get out of those tight spots. And verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. You are with me. You are with me. Meaning the shepherd Jesus. Okay? You can almost see those predators, the wolves and the coyotes. Imagine their eyes shining in the dark looking down at those sheep. Ooh, be scared, wouldn't you? If you want a sheep. Mm. Okay, now the next line says, Your shepherd's rod and staff comfort me. Now a rod, what's that? It's, it's like a long, it's like a longer stick. It's a big stick, yeah. Okay, and a staff, what's a staff like, Ruth? A staff is kind of like what Moses had. It's a stick. It's, it's got a crook on the end. It's like a cane, yeah. like a long cane with a crook on the end. Okay, the shepherd would use the rod to scare the predator animals away, and his staff could be used to pull the sheep back to him. He'd use that crooked end and pull them back from dangerous places. Okay, you get the next one. And verse 5 says, you prepare, you prepare a feast for me right in front of my enemies. Oh, right in front of them. The feast is served in front of those wolves and coyotes who are watching off in the distance. Because Jesus knows he can protect the sheep, right? All right. Then it tells us that you pour oil on my head. Why would you pour oil on the head? Warren, why do you think? Because um, it's You don't know, do you? Well, you know what I learned? I learned that in that time... Oh, well, maybe one of you girls know the answer. What's the answer? It's to keep the wool on that. Not Helps. It helps condition the wool. What were you thinking? Yeah, I thought no wrong instance. Okay, well, I didn't know this. It says that oil was used as first aid for cuts and thorns that they might need to pull out of, of their ears or their legs or something, okay? Or to get the thorns out of that thick wool. The oil would help get it out, all right? So it finishes up with this. My cup runs over. Your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Live in the house. Oh, that's where you're going to go to heaven, the house of the Lord, right? You want to. Okay. That 10th that chapter of John I was talking about. Let's read that and see what the Good Shepherd, Jesus, says about his sheep. And, about it. and who were the sheep? Us, right? Okay. So, here we go. Oh, my page blew from the wind. Here we are. Therefore, Jesus said again. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. 
So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down of oh. my own accord. Of his own accord, Jesus laid down his life, right? So that we could all be saved and live in heaven one day with Jesus, with God, right? Okay, so that's pretty awesome. I think I'm glad I have a good shepherd. Are you? Me too. All right, shall we say a prayer and thank God for sending us Jesus, the good shepherd? Lauren, you want to rejoin us for the prayer? No? Okay. All right, so we'll say a prayer. Everybody got each other's hands? All right, here we go. Bow your head. Okay, take a hand and bow your head. Dear Jesus, we are thankful to you for being our good shepherd. Please help us to listen for your voice and to follow you and trust you. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for laying down your life for us so that we can have everlasting life in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for helping me. Everybody have a good day. What is that? shepherd. He gives me everything I need. He lets me lie down in fields of green grass. He leads me beside quiet waters. He gives me new strength. 
He guides me in the right paths for the honor of his name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. You are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a feast for me right in front of my enemies. You pour oil on my head. My cup runs over. Your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You didn't stay and listen. You can hear me, though.